Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a kind of go with the flow vintage rose. And um, I don't know why I just dipped this in my water. I'm using a water brush. So this is kind of a fun way to get used to using your water brush and also getting used to what your paints want to do. The paints I'm using here are the core watercolors. And I'm using this because that's what I did this little sketch with when I was, um, I was out house sitting for somebody and they had this uh, very similar pattern on their patio furniture and, and it was just this vintage rose type of pattern and I thought it was really pretty. So what I'm doing here, and you kind of have to tip your head and look at the light, I'm making a, um, I'm making basically trying to anyway, make the pattern of the rose with just water. Okay, I recommend doing this on some paper that's not too precious so that you're not worried about wasting or anything. And so now I'm just going to tip that to the light. Hopefully you can see the shininess there if I just catch it just right. So I've got kind of this rose pattern down there. And don't worry if it doesn't come off perfectly because um, look at the color just wants to flow. Isn't that fun? Because you're just learning about your pigments at this point. You can go in and guide it a little bit, but mainly I just want you to see how your paints will flow. And then um, to clean your brush, I have a water bucket, so I'm just going to rinse it off. But all you have to do is squeeze it on a paper towel if you're painting out and about. Now I'm going to go in with some pink, and I'm going to start at the outside of my flower with the pink. And I'm just going to let it float around. And um, you do need to make sure that you have really good beads of color in there. If you're, like, out painting in a garden, then outside in the summer, it is really going to gonna dry quickly. Um, and then also sometimes in the winter, if you've got your heat on. You're, like, here I'm painting under some pretty bright lights, so my paint wants to dry pretty quickly. So you just kind of have to keep that in mind. Uh, it will... Um, dry a little bit lighter because you have your paper so wet in the areas where there's the beads of, uh, of color but so just kind of keep that in mind I know it looks a little bold right now and you can kind of tip it a little bit if you want your paints to blend I also think it's kind of fun to grab some colors and drip them in on top of others and let them kind of do their thing as well now this will teach you, I know it seems like a very basic exercise, but it's going to teach you um, the control, it kind of control your water and your flow, and it gives you permission to let the watercolors do what they want to do. They call them watercolor for a reason. You can go in with like some paint with, now if I have less water on my brush and I just kind of get into that um, that paint, and I have a tutorial on how to make this palette, and I'll try to remember to link that up in an iCard for you, but it's on my, just, just, Google DIY travel palette on my channel. I can go in here with that not very much water on my brush, mostly just paint, and I can add more detail and look at how I can really just kind of pull up this imaginary flower. So at this point, I'm only seeing my sketch. I'm not seeing what I originally was going by. So it kind of gets that six degrees of separation or whatever. It gets kind of unique the more that you kind of paint from your own sketches. So I kind of like that. I think it's kind of fun and bright and it would be a great design for a scrapbook page or the front of a card. Now I want to do some leaves. So I'm going to do the same thing. I am going, I like to group things in groups of three. So I'm going to start off with one little leaf over here. I can do them one at a time though. I don't, see if I let it touch into the water, I'm going to pull out and wick out some of that color. You can do that or you can avoid that by just leaving a little bit of a gap. I think it's kind of fun because you often see, like with rose petals especially, you will see a little bit of a, um, like a, a, like a, if it's a red rose, a lot of times you see like a little bit of a rim of red around the, um, the leaf. And if you want to, and you have like a little credit card scraper handy, you could scrape in veins. I didn't do it on that one, but I do like to keep a credit card scraper in my little travel kit. Um, I am using core watercolors and I have to say I really like how a little goes a long way. I set up this palette a long time ago and I, I feel like I've barely made a dent. I don't think I've had to um, reload anything, which is pretty amazing. I do find that their colors go a long way. Most watercolors do though, so don't feel like you have to run out and buy these, but I do recommend them uh, if you you know, if you like really vibrant colors, they are super vibrant. Uh, their introductory sets, I think, are quite affordable. That's that's what I have. I just bought the three sets of six introductory sets. Now they have a set of 24 that has all their, uh, that has like 24 unique colors. Because if you buy, if you buy the six introductory sets and the 12 introductory sets, you're going to end up with six doubles. So that's why I haven't got that. And I like the little tins they come into. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm just gabbing. <laughs> I'm just gabbing while I'm painting. But it's such a 
fun um, a fun process. You can actually go in with that yellow too, and you can drip some of that in there. That yellow that you used um, on the in the center of the flower, and you can add some more blue if you want shadows. Maybe I'll just do two there. Maybe I'll do three over here. You know, there's no rules. You can always change that. Maybe we'll do a single over here. Oftentimes, I won't go all the way out to the edge when I wet it, when I wet just the water. And then when I go in with my paint, I'll just sharpen up the edges. I'll go, especially if I want it to have like a little bit of a serrated edge, I'll just kind of dab that in and let it wick inward. This is a fun, fast, and loose technique. And I feel like I've been doing a lot of really tight watercolors lately. They usually start off loose, but they end up being really detailed. And I think that some people would find that almost overwhelming or not what their watercolor goals are. So I want to make sure that no matter what stage you're in or what you hope to achieve with your watercolors, that you can find something useful here. Because I know not everybody can sign up for classes. Not everybody, you know, has the disposable income to, to pay for classes. And I want to be able to, to give something to, um, to everyone. I'm going to put a little cluster of three leaves here. And then we're going to be done, I think, for this one. That one turned a lot a little strange. I'm going to have to do something. Maybe make that one a little bit bigger there. That's a little bit better. Sometimes just turning your picture around backwards, it, it, makes, it helps you look um, at your painting with fresh eyes and more accurately. It's just like kind of looking at it in a mirror helps or giving it a little break, giving your eyes like a little break, taking a, a couple hours or go getting a cup of coffee and coming back. When you look at your painting again, it gets a lot more. Um, you can see it more accurately, I should say. But I just wanted to put it on a few of these quick and easy little watercolor tutorials so that um, you can have, even if you just have 10 minutes to practice, you can, you can totally do that in 10 minutes. I'm going to put a little yellow in there. I love the mixing on the paper. I think that um, it gives you a freshness to your watercolor that you don't, you won't get otherwise. Make sure to go with the shape if you scrape in your veining. Give it some some roundness. Give it some movement. Um, gosh, I'm thinking that I like that. I'm just looking almost upright like that. I don't know. Sometimes I turn it around and I realize I kind of like it facing the other direction a little bit more. And if you have a hard time seeing what you're uh, putting down for water, you can always kind of have a slightly dirty brush so you can see it as long as it's a color. A little too blind when you or you feel like you're painting a little too blind when you're just going in with the water because that does come with practice getting used to that oh, that ultramarine that darkens the sap green cools it down without um, making it without altering it too much there that's kind of pretty I like that and if you want you can add some spatter to this you can do whatever you want to do it's your painting I hope you have a really fun time with this I think I do want to add some spattering because I like to I like to spatter um, and then you can kind of even dab. That's the fun technique. You dab color into the spatters that you've done. So you can spatter with clear water and then you can only color the ones you want. You will end up with water drops if you do that, um, if you do that on top of something you painted, but you can kind of control a little bit more. I do like to spatter in with the color though. I think that's really fun. So I hope you found this lesson useful and you give it a try. And if you liked it, please share it with your friends and leave me a thumbs up before you go. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.